Hey everyone, Phil here with another video today about tuning bass drums. So following on from my videos about tuning snare drums, tuning toms, today we get to the bass drum. I'm going to be sharing with you some of my tips, some of the ways that I think uh, is, is good to get a great sound quickly. Um, so my experience is, is touring with my band Paul Common Trio in lots of different countries in, around the world, turning up to shows and not always being able to use my own gear, um, using drum kits that we borrowed or rented. Um, I've just had to learn how to quickly get a great sound out of a bass drum. A lot of the mistakes that guys make, I think in some ways, is tuning too high. So um, traditionally, you listen to modern music, you listen to U2's Vertigo, for instance, or Coldplay, In My Place, there's some good um, drum sounds at the very start of those tracks. Some of the top bands have always got a, a low-pitched, short decay sound. So tuning too high will, will give you a very ringy, resonant kind of thing, which might be great for jazz, that kind of thing. But in a contemporary setting where you're micing up your drum kit, using something like a Beta 52, which is a very common microphone for bass drum, you really want a short decay, very short sound. And we're going to um, put on some new heads today, courtesy, courtesy of Evans. This is an Evans EMAD system with a resonant and batter head with some muffling built in. Uh, thank you, Evans Australia, Diderio Music, who distributes Evans here in Australia. Thank you for these heads to, to, uh, for sponsoring that for this video. I'm also going to be using red cymbals today, so make sure you check them out. They're an amazing product. I'm going to do some reviews of those later coming up. Today I'm using a Pearl Masters Studio uh, drum kit, which is a birch shell. Um, but these techniques really apply to any drum kit. Um, bass drum is actually easy in some ways to get right because it's not so much about the resonance of the shell as it is about having good heads, some good muffling and some, some uh, low pitch tuning to get a really good sort of modern contemporary sound out of it. So let's dive in, let's pull this apart, whack on the Evans heads and see what we can do. Alright, so here's our Evans heads, let's open up the box. Resonant head already has a, a port and a, a muffle built into that. Batter head, okay, so we have the Evans EMAD is a really, really clever system. It's using a ring attached to the main head with a, a foam insert, which you can swap for either a large insert like this or just keep the small one. We're gonna start with the small one just to see how that goes. So what I'm gonna do here is just get this set sitting and settled. Grab my hoop. And start putting things back together. I actually just want to get these finger tight to start with. So again I'm going to use my diagonal pattern that I've used on previous videos where I put one on here, one on that side and move in a diagonal fashion across the drum head and the reason I want to do that is just to keep even tension on the head um, rather than tensioning one side of the head and getting some sort of warping in the head. Okay I'm just going to quickly check that they're all kind of roughly even. This will assume that your lugs, which the tuning rods, tension rods slip into, are actually well lubricated. Okay, so that feels pretty good. Now I'm just gonna push on the, on the rim just to see if I can find any sort of parts of the head that need to be sort of pre-stretched, if you know what I mean, that, that haven't been stretched or the glue's sort of, or the plastic hasn't settled. That feels pretty good now, and I'm just gonna make sure that everything's, once again, very evenly tensioned by fingers. And all I'm gonna do is start here at number one, just give it a 180 turn. Same with number two, two on this side, over to three here, 180 degrees, four, five on this side, six here, seven here, eight here, one, 180 degrees, nine here, and 10 here. Okay, so there you go, that's a good basic tension. We may actually ne even need less. Good to just put your hand in the middle now at this point and just give it a stretch. That'll just sort of help it sit and become even. And the pitch has actually already dropped a little there, which is kind of cool. All right, what we're gonna do now is flip over, change the resonant head as well, and then we'll put a microphone on it and see what it sounds like. And same thing, let's get these tension rods up to finger tight. 
on each one. Starting with number one here. Okay, so again, I'm just gonna do 180 degrees per turn on each lug here. So number one, number two. Okay. Give it a stretch in the middle, just lightly, not too heavy. That's a good starting place. First of all, we're just gonna have a listen to what this sounds like with the Beta 52, Shure Beta 52 in the porthole of the front of the drum, no muffling, just with the standard small EMAD ring on the, on the batter head. As you can hear, it's got quite a bit of resonance ringiness, but there's absolutely no damping in the kick drum. So the EMAD is doing an amazing job of making this kick drum sound punchy already. And let's hear that in the context of a groove. after a real big sort of boomy John Bonham kind of resonant sound, it actually fits the bill really well with that. But for most applications, and I think I would speak for most sound guys, they're actually looking for more control than that. Um, they can use gating to a degree, but it is kind of nice if we can hand them on a platter a really punchy dry sound as well. So what first thing we're gonna do is just try changing the EMAD ring. I'm gonna try this bigger ring, which attaches to the head and we'll see what that sounds like. Okay, I love that the ring system is external and it's really easy to change from the smaller ring to the larger ring. So let's see what that sounds like. So only a tiny bit more controlled, but still a great sound. Let's have a listen to that in the context of a groove as well. Okay, not bad. Let's have a go at just pulling the tuning down a little bit on, on the batter head here. I know I've only put one 180 degree turn on each of the lugs, so I'm just gonna take that back 90 degrees on each lug and actually bring the tuning down even lower and see what happens. So it's actually dried the sound up a bit because the, the heads are now a slightly different tension, if you know what I mean. So the batter head is a little looser, the resonant head is a little tighter. Let's have a listen to that. So, not a bad sound at all. In fact, I'm quite surprised that it's changed so much just by bringing that batter head down a little bit more in tension. Okay, so tuning up, I find, is only gonna give you more of that resonance, more of that ringiness, if you like. Tuning lower is gonna give you a dry sound. What I'd like to do now is just throw my blanket in there. It's pretty standard, just sort of double, double queen or queen size bed blanket just to mute the resonant head a little more and mute the batter head a little more and see if I can really nail the sound that I'm really hoping for. Okay. So what I've done is I've popped a blanket in there just to mute the front and back heads a little. Um, and I find that this is the sound that I'm really after. Both as a musician, I want a fairly short sustain, but I know it's gonna be great because I record myself a lot I know that my live sound engineer is gonna be much happier with this sound as well because even though the EMAD does a great job, there's still a lot of resonance going on. And when I put a blanket in there, it just sort of dampens things down to a level that I'm much more comfortable at. So let's hear that 
and then I'll put it in the context of a groove as well. Okay, so there you go. Like I said, I think the blanket or a pillow in there just adds that little bit more tightness to the sound, a little bit more punch, um, which I think is really, really great for me, for myself here in the studio, And I'm, sh but I'm pretty sure in a live setting that's really something that pleases the live sound engineer as well. So talk to your sound guys about that and talk to about um, whether they're happy with the way it sounds naturally. Um, as I said, this is just the technique that I find works for me. There's lots of different ways to do this. I just encourage you to experiment, right? And just have a go with whatever heads you have. Have a go at really loosening the batter head and then have a go at really tightening the front head and vice versa and just see what happens and just see what works for you the most and the best. Um, yeah, thanks again to Evans in Australia here, Dedaria Music, Red Symbols uh, for helping me with this video. As I said, I'm gonna share more about Red Symbols coming up soon. Thanks for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe. I'd love to have you on board for future videos. And thanks for watching. Take care. All the best.